Hey everybody, welcome to episode 65 of the Foundation First Fitness Show. Today, uh, joined by an awesome guest. I mean, we've just spent the last probably, I, I think about an hour just talking shop and, you know, it's it's honestly, it's probably gonna be one of those, one of those episodes where really you could see the person's passion about what they're doing and uh, it, it's something that really kind of caught my attention. I think it was our first phone call. Mm. You started talking i was like hold on hold on i had to like literally was pumping the brakes and i'm like <laughs> i want to hold this for this for the for the interview because this is like it was just awesome information anyway let, let's just get this thing going nat tell everyone a little bit about yourself give yourself a little bit of an introduction and uh we can just kind of go from there so um i'm the chef and over oh, chef and owner of a meal prep company in montreal mm -hmm. um it's all aimed at healthy lifestyles uh, we make our meals from completely unprocessed um, foods nothing no preservatives or anything like that either and it's really to just be able to provide people with clean food um, but not necessarily like diet food because right. no diet works there's no answer there's for, no one answer for everything. no there's no one 100%. answer for weight loss or fixing anything in the world right right so the philosophy behind the business is that if you adopt healthier habits mm -hmm. that in general your whole life will be healthier and if you like if you become healthy if you do have extra weight the moment you get healthy your body will lose the weight because it doesn't need it anymore right. so just by making those lifestyle changes people see success with the meals and they're sustainable they're not cutting out anything specific um, I'm not anti-carb, anti-sugar, anti-fat, anti-anything. It's food is food. Um, and you should be able to eat what you want in limitations, obviously. Like, don't eat, like, a pound of candy, but also don't eat a pound of broccoli. You know, like, <laughs> both of them are not great for you. So um, that's kind of what we do. Um, in terms of me, um, I'm... A chef by trade uh, mm -hmm. went to the ithq uh, in montreal which is a french cooking school here mm -hmm. uh, subsidized by the government and trained there i worked in europe for about five years at some of the best restaurants in the world uh noma which is in copenhagen the fat duck in england joel robuchon in paris uh, did the greats um and then i came back to montreal and actually ended up leaving kitchens for a bit because the industry here isn't exactly the same as europe and i didn't love it as much mm -hmm. And when I finally started getting healthier, um, just was motivated to make some changes. People started asking me how I was losing weight and what I was doing. And I just explained that I had still been going to the gym the same amount. It was just learning like portioning and that this food's a bit better than that one and whatnot. And the company started just from friends telling friends, telling friends. And like 10 clients later, I was like, huh, I should make a Facebook page or, oh, I should make a website. And it just blew up from there because that's awesome. The food is actually good. It's not like it's... I was trained by the best, so I try to put that in every meal still, you know? Mm -hmm. And you said... I remember we were talking before. You said something about how you have, like... There's some, you know, influence from all these different types of food and meals and almost the different mentalities of how to cook. How do you think... How do you feel that's affected? Has that affected any... The way you cook or thought process? Because, you know, we have... You know, in North America, we get hit with, like... God knows how much propaganda about mm. oh you should you should never put this in your food you should always put this in your mm. food and you know how is, has any of that affected the way you cook? So every restaurant I've worked in has like a philosophy of its own, right? Okay. Um, so through working with different chefs in mm -hmm. different restaurants, um, I guess you can pick and choose what matches with your own personal philosophy, and that has been how the company's grown. So there's little parts from here and there, but in general, uh, the most important thing is that you're making food that you're proud of. Um, in school, like I mentioned before, we're taught that like, if there's a dish that you are unsure about, right? Sometimes there's dishes that I look at and I'm like, mm, I don't know, like I just, something about it doesn't click with me. Um, you ask yourself, would you serve this to your mm -hmm. grandmother? If yes, you're good to go. If no, then why serve it to your clients? They should be as valued, if not more than your own family, because your family they'll be okay if something's not great right but your clients won't be so right. you have to have the same amount of dedication and like scrupulous kind of like not rules but uh standards for the clients and that's i think the biggest thing that i took away from all those great restaurants was 
the standards that you have to withheld hold every day, every production, every meal for your clients. I think that's one of the like that's probably one of the most interesting things you said because I know, I I mean we were talking for a bit and honestly like. I think that was one of the areas that I think we kind of like mesh really well mm-hmm. on was that, you know, you were talking about your standards and, and it's something that resonated a lot with me because I think that a lot of, a lot of indi- individuals almost kind of turn a blind eye to the standards, mm-hmm. you know, and it's almost like, well, I'm going to provide, yeah, sure, I would give this to them and no, I would, you know, it doesn't matter. They won't just, just try to make some profit. But I think that what you're doing is so, you know, it's the way you're doing it, you could show, you're showing people that you really, you're really putting their health first and not just trying to make the money. And that's one thing that I think is really important too, is like in business, I've met and known tons of people that they're in it for the bottom line, like you just said, the profit. And a lot of, especially food companies, they'll put fillers in the food to lower their cost and make more profit. Mm -hmm. And I'm the reverse. I rather give you more protein and more vegetables than rice or whatever other kind of crappy food there might be. Um, Even if it means my profit's a bit smaller, but I know that my client's gonna have better nutrition, better meal, and not only be happier with the results, but wanna come back. I don't have to convince them to come back. Exactly. So it's, I'm not really, it's not, making myself less profitable. I think it's actually making myself more profitable by giving them more because then they stay longer and they're happier. And in the end, especially like in, in chefing or being a chef, uh, there's, (laughs) there's a very, there's a famous quote that, um, chefs are merchants of happiness. It's Alain Ducasse that's famously said that he's a huge French chef who actually passed away, uh, last year. I actually Um, know who that is. Yeah. He's very, very well known. It was a big, big thing, but, um, and it's, it's true, you know, like as a chef, your identity to a person, like most people probably don't even know who I am if they were pop, cross me on the street. Like some people, cause I was on Chop Canada, they recognize me and that actually makes me shy. I'm always like, yeah, okay, you know, but your identity is that meal, right? That's how you show yourself to the person. So by providing clients with a good experience through the food, you're showing them who you are, especially if that food, they eat it and they're like, wow, that's my interaction with them. There's no other way that they'll understand who I am or my company if it's not through the food. <laughs> just, oh my God. I don't even know how to, I, like my whole, all my interview, I'm like, forget this interview. Let's just sit down. I have questions for you. I'm going to try <laughs> to figure all this stuff out. I got some business questions and stuff. <laughs> um, where did this, I know you spoke about going to Europe. Where did this really all just kind of kick? kind of kick itself off like where did you think I want to do food I want to work in the in the restaurant industry I want to cook I want to be a chef because I noticed like you've got like a whisk tattoo on your arm a rolling pin here it's kind of hidden pin. I didn't even notice that one I just saw the whisk now and you yeah th- this arm. one's kind of hidden in um since I can remember you know how kids grow up and they're like I want to be an astronaut yeah, yeah. I used to say I wanted to be a chef and, and people I got laughed at a lot I had especially like come on well, really when I went to culinary school, it wasn't the cool thing yet. Being a chef was still, like the Food Network was, wasn't really watched as much. Like it really okay. only became a huge thing five five years ago was kind of, I think when the huge chef, chef. thing blew up. Mm-hmm. Um, so when I actually went, there was a lot of friends, especially friends' parents, they were like, oh, that's cool. What are you gonna do for a career though? And I was like, this is a career. like. It wasn't taken seriously, especially like I come from a family that most of it went through very formal education, like university. So when like my aunts and uncles and grandparents found out I wanted to be a chef, there was some that were kind of like, okay, like they didn't get it. Uh, I luckily though, like I grew up in a household, like my parents were always very much like follow your dream. If you do something you're passionate about, you will be successful. Um, And I like, I mean, my first memory in a kitchen, like I mentioned before, like I have like the tattoos of the three Rice Krispie guys on me because it's my first memory of a kitchen is making Rice Krispies with my mom. So like to me, being in a kitchen was my calm place. Most people, it's the stressful place. They don't like to cook, it is stressful, but in that stress, there's something therapeutic. And I've always felt that like as a teenager, you know, you go through heartbreak, I would like sit down on the kitchen floor and that was my zone. Like I wouldn't go to my bedroom when I was upset. I'd go to the kitchen, you know? So it just always, I guess, I don't know. It's just always been my thing. That's crazy. 
And so that kind of led you into culinary school, led you to Europe, mm -hmm. led you to start wanting to do this business. Is there any, do you think that fitness or health, does that have any influence on what you're doing right now? Oh yeah, for sure. Um, personally, I have some health issues. Um, so the food I eat at home is, um, I don't know if the word calculated is the right one, but like very, uh, there's certain foods I can eat mm -hmm. and there's certain foods I can't just because it'll put me off for a couple of days. Um, and I only really actually realized that when, once I started getting healthy, because before I was really healthy, um, I always cooked healthy food in portions that were not suitable for me, obviously, but there were certain ingredients that I would use that I didn't realize weren't great for me. And I actually felt pretty crappy every day, but I was so used to it, I didn't really know. So once I started actually changing my habits and feeling great, I, and then when I would eat like that one ingredient that didn't sit with me well, then I was like, oh my God, it's really bad. Holy, like, I, but I had been living so long, live, feeling terrible that I didn't really know it. Right. So now, um, like the, the meals I eat at home are very precise, I guess you should, I could say, you know? Um, and the meals I make for my clients are the same way because I don't believe that I should serve them something I wouldn't personally eat. Like I said, the whole, like, would you serve it to your grandmother thing? And I personally, I can't have anything that's processed, no chemicals, no preservatives. Um, I mean, I, I don't eat red meat personally. It doesn't sit with me well. I started eating meat in the last year because of the medical issue. My mm. doctor actually told me to eat meat and less vegetables because I was vegetarian for nine years, which is quite rare. Doctors usually tell you to eat less meat, more veggies. Right. Um, but for my condition, it was the reverse. So, um, you know, it's the food I make is really dependent on my health. Mm -hmm. And the whole reason I actually started getting healthy to begin with, and I saw these changes, was because I started going to the gym. Uh, I actually had played rugby for years, stopped because uh, of injury, and then did nothing for like three. And that's so it was like a shock to the system. Yeah, and I was just, I guess I lost motivation. I don't know. It's just, you go through phases in life. And yeah, absolutely. One, uh, it's actually Christmas time a couple years ago. Um, I just got, was like, you know what? I'm going to start at a gym. And it was December 27th, I remember. Literally the holidays. And I found a gym that kept me motivated um, just because the trainers really care about like the clients. They help you. They push you too. Mm -hmm. If they see you're in a comfort zone, they push you to go better and better, which I really liked. Um, and it's always different exercises. It's never treadmills every day type thing. And uh, I was kind of like, you know what? Like, I want to do some sort of thing. So I did a challenge with them and that challenge actually made you track your nutrients and what you were eating. And that's when I understood. I was like, wow, I've been really not eating well. Yeah. And so without that, I would have actually never had my meal prep business because I wouldn't have learned what I would. So it's been like a process through it, you know, that it's it kind all of evolved itself. Yeah. It, it's like I said, it's created itself just from me right. choosing to change my habits and then people seeing that like, oh, the habit changes are what caused her to be healthy. And now that she's healthy, she seems happier and she's more successful because she's happier. And it's like people see that. So they're understanding that like it's one little change can create a domino effect of making 100%. your life better. 100%. I think one of the things that really drew me to what you were doing was, you know, I talked to, I, you know, I deal with a lot of athletes. Uh, I have a lot of clients that are not athletes as well. And me personally, I'm so incredibly busy throughout my day. I just, I don't think people understand the benefit of having that, like, you know, it's good mm -hmm. always at your disposal. It's a lot of people just don't, because it's, it's almost for us, we think that, you know, okay, the food that we always thought was good is almost like that's, that's like we've, we were taught that, mm -hmm. you know, that's in our brain, our, the way our mind functions is we see food that we think is good, it's good, we just can eat that. Mm -hmm. And then when you're busy, you start, you know, you cut corners and we don't realize how much those corners that we're cutting or the amounts that we're eating is affecting us. So having almost that regularity and the quality in that mm -hmm. regularity, I think makes a huge difference because it's, it's one of the things that I've done recently. We spoke about that mm -hmm. stuff. Like I have a setup here just for myself that when I have it's quick meals, but everything mm -hmm. is pre-calculated. So I know that I'm not eating too much. I'm not eating too mm -hmm. little. Uh, it's nothing that's and it's all and you I mean we spoke about that mm -hmm. just showed you it was very everything's very clean everything's very well well done it's mm -hmm. not 
just kind of, you know, cut corners, go find some stuff, whatever, just eat whatever is available, well, you know? It's, it's funny you say that because, like you said, we were taught things in the past. It's actually, uh, today, this morning, I actually saw one of my old Concordia professors because I studied, like, food studies at right. Concordia in anthropology. And she was in nutrition. And she's in the middle of writing a book called What is Food? And it's to reteach people where the food actually comes from, what to do with it, and, like, the nutrition behind it. And um, we we're talking about how, like, someone says carbs, there's a preconceived notion that when you say carbs, people think potato or, or white face, bread yeah. or, but like carbs of fruits are carbs, 100%. vegetables are carbs. So Absolutely. they think carbs are bad when they're really not like the other day I had a meal. It was it, delicious. Actually, I was mm -hmm. like unsure of how good it was going to be, but this um, eggplant lasagna with cashew cheese and like a garlic oat crumble on mm -hmm. top. Right. Um, and really the only in theory, starchy carb, bad carb per se, was the oat crumble, which is like a tablespoon, so whatever. But when you look at the nutrition of it, there was 60 grams of carbs because yeah, there was eggplant and tomatoes and cashews. And so I had a client that was like, oh my God, this is too high. I'm like, no, it's vegetables though. Yeah, like yeah. these are it's good for you. So there's preconceived notions that I really want to break the barrier with, with my meals. I like to try to teach my clients, but there's also some people don't want to learn either. Um, but I think that because I give the nutrition, nutrition information on them and then their ingredients so they can see like, okay, this is high fat, but there's no, there's no, where's there, the, where's the, where's the bad part of it? Exactly. Or like, hey, this is high carb, but where's the bad part? So people are starting to understand that there is no such thing as like the ideal meal, let's say, right? Mm -hmm. Low fat is not good, especially if you're like you low fat yogurt, because if they're taking out that fat, they're putting in other crap. Yeah, yeah, you know, sure. like I tell people that all the time. I'm like, when they show me low fat yogurt, I'm no. like, that's not good. No, yeah. So if they're taking things out, it's not good for you either, because um, they're enriched with other things, right? 100%. Just even even milk. Milk is now enriched with extra vitamins, but that's because they've no killed sense. all the vitamin. Like, there's no winning sometimes, right? No, no. But, right. <laughs> um, but I, it's interesting because there's like stigmas in food that have to be broken, like the gluten thing we we're talking about before. Gluten's not really bad. It's the modern gluten that has issues. Mm -hmm. Um, and a lot of people, unless celiac, can eat it, but they're eating the wrong versions of it. So, you know, there's there, there's things that our meals kind of break the barrier of. And not only that, but you were saying that, like, there's the convenience of having the meal ready. And I thought that was really funny because when I started the company, um, I would make the meals for my clients. And then during the week, I'd cook my own at home. And I got to a point that the company was getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And I'd get home and I'd be like, stressed out. And I'd be like, oh my God, I need to make the food. And I'm like going crazy. And one day my boyfriend was like, why don't you just like make them and we'll like take it out of the mortgage payment and we'll be fine. And I didn't really like the idea because it was kind of like, I didn't know how to separate that from the business because I was still learning to run a business right at the time. Yeah. And I, I mean, in the beginning, I thought my clients just didn't like to cook or didn't know how, right? I didn't really understood it, stand it was for busy people. Oh my God, it was life-changing. Just eating my own meals was life-changing because I get home and I'm just, I like I work 19, 20 hour days. Instead of having to also cook and clean, I just reheat. Yeah, and it's oh my god. I, I don't think you know what I was. I was having a conversation with someone about that. I'm like, if if I didn't, if I didn't live as far away, or if I didn't have clients that I had to go see, every single person, every single client I saw was coming to this office. I would either a have a place that's literally right outside here, mm -hmm. or b I would take the bus just to be able to buy myself some time to do work and have someone try. Or if I was making them, I would literally Uber it every single day. I would never own a car because the time value is so, for a busy person, it's so important. And yes, there's a time to be, to enjoy cooking and there's a time to do that. And there's not, it's not a bad thing to say like you should never cook and you should replace it with this. But when you're busy, like the value of eating things that are good for you mm that are not going to slow you down, well, that are thing, not going to make you gives feel you tired. energy. It's going to give you sustainable energy. It's monumental and people mm. don't realize that. And I think that's one of the most important things that I think you're doing, which I really want people that are listening or watching to mm. really take away from that because that's where I think it really comes down to is that there's so much more, like we think, we think energy, the first thing we think of is coffee. You know, we think energy, we're like, oh, I need to have like a Red Bull. I need to like get some sugar in me. I need to, mm. 
And it's like, okay, maybe you're just not eating enough of the right things mm. because your meal's not balanced because you don't have time to eat properly. So you're quickly going to the thing that's pre-made, that's not like what you're doing, mm. that's quickly just thrown together and they're buying it at a... Well, that's the thing too, that a, lot, a lot of the time when they're busy, you're that's when people, they slack in their choices for food, mm-hmm. right? That's when you go to McDonald's or whatever other fast food chain or even... Like, you know, even the healthy ones aren't really that healthy. If you look of like they're, they're, they're chains. Um, and, and one of the things about those chains is like, so by, by law, if you have like 10 or 15% of your ingredients that are organic, you can say you're organic without being certified. If you say you're certified organic, you have to be hundred percent, but there's a lot of companies saying like it's organic, but it's really only 10% organic, you know? Right. So um you're buying into notions that you don't fully know about and you think it's a good good decision because of one word as opposed to really knowing what you're eating right um and that that causes us to or people to choose bad foods because because the package says gluten-free or it says organic or it says percent instead of actually knowing what it is and what are the what options do you have at your establishment for people where can they what are the options available can they get like a meal a day is it two meals three meals so um for pre-ordering clients uh, we sell through the website actually um okay. we have a couple pickup locations in the uh-huh. montreal area and our own storefront but most of it is home delivery on sundays and from the website you can order three five seven or ten meals okay and now actually since this week breakfasts um, but it kind of depends on what you need, right? If you just need a couple meals to like get through the week here or there, that's three meals. If you want lunches every day of the week, that's the five, right? Um, a lot of my clients though do 10 because it's lunch and dinner the whole week. They don't have to stress about anything. And a lot of people that do that have told me that like they feel like they can cheat more on weekends because they know they ate healthy during the week. Mm-hmm. It ensures them that they didn't eat bad in the week. So if they do want to eat unhealthy, they don't feel guilty. Cause there's a whole guilt thing with food that happens often. Right. So they're, they're like, your meals are guilt free. So they love it for that reason. Um, but it really depends on the person, right? The lifestyle, the, the, the meals are also, unless there's a fresh salad or whatever, they're freezable. So if you don't eat them all, no worries. Um, how long do they last? So f- about five to seven days, the containers are actually like sealed with like a film. They honestly, they do kind of look like a microwave meal. I hate to say that, but they do because it's a little black container with a film. The film's made for reheating though. So it's ideal to leave it on or else because it kind of like steams the food or else it all dry out. Okay. But because it's hermetically sealed, there's no airflow and it, they last literally almost a week. Sometimes even at home, I eat them in like the fridge in the fridge. I eat them even sometimes eight, nine days, not fish ones, obviously or whatever. But the reason food goes bad is because uh, the enzymes are eating each other, right? I think a fruit rots. It's actually just getting more and more and more ripe. Right. If you think of it. Yeah. yeah. And those are the enzymes breaking down like aged meat, same thing. Right. So, but that only happens with airflow. So because the meals have no airflow, just a little bit of air, obviously in it, the, it actually slows Slows down the the process. Exactly. Nice. Nice. And with no preservatives or anything, right? That's great. And so what are the what are we talking about in terms of price points? I hate to ask that, but I yeah, think it's okay. just so that people get an idea of what we're looking at. So it depends a bit. We have actually two sizes. Uh-huh. Um, the regular size is made for most people. Um, it's about, I mean, 350 to 500 grams, so like a pound of food. It's legit, like a good it's amount. A, yeah, yeah. Um, if you're looking like the three meal plan, you're looking at like 15, 38 or something like that per meal but if you're doing 10 meals it goes down to like $13 if you're doing a subscription it could be even like $12 or meal so the more you buy the less expensive it is economies of scale Um, and then the large size is almost two times the size Um, and those are about $18.50 each economies of scale also Um, those though like people often share them uh, unless like the clients who devour them are guys that are like six five and 215 pounds like we just actually had a contract for a hollywood actor who was in montreal yeah, actually a that. couple of them but yeah he was he was six five and 215 and looking to lean out but gain weight so he needed specific okay. macros and he was paleo so it was a bit specific yeah um but within like two weeks he already was gaining weight and leaning out from specifically the meals that we planned for him so he was really happy with it 
and he would eat the whole and like as we were making them I was like no one can eat three meals like this a day like this is impossible and he was just oh my god them. went through all of them That's and snacks <laughs> oh my you guys make snacks yeah or we, you do or you do or you just did it for him no, no we do we have a line of healthy snacks too like um for example like the brownies they're actually uh-huh. green lentils they're then like cocoa powder dates you didn't like, think of bringing any today or I actually as I was getting in the car I was like uh, I was driving out and I was already like three minutes late so I was like shit I'll bring it next time (laughs) that's fair fair. I'll let it slide this time (laughs) um where can people get in touch with you uh to order I know you you prefer everyone go online and Mm -hmm. order so what is the website uh so the website's lacomitamtl.com okay uh or Facebook or Instagram's lacomita or La Comida MTL, sorry, <laughs> or uh, La Comida underscore MTL for Instagram. Uh, we mess, we answer Facebook messages, Instagram, everything message. Um, and there, we also have a storefront in El Perot. Where's um, that located in El Perot? It's uh, at the corner of Don Quixote and Boulevard Perot. It's 1847 okay. Boulevard Perot number 500 in Notre Dame de L'Ile Perot. So and they can like and they can go pick up their meals mm-hmm. straight from there. Yep. So if they're in that area. You can head out there, pick that up. If not, you can get them delivered. Yeah, here. and if you forgot to order, you can go there too. So there's a lot of people that end up messaging us on like Friday night or Saturday after order deadline. Mm-hmm. And I just tell them like, you guys have to stop by the store because, and like I send out delivery times to my clients. Like well, there's a certain point that I can't add an extra client in just because all the other ones will be offset because that one person. Right, right, right. So often I just tell them like, stop by the store. We make about a surplus of like 30, 40 meals a weekend just for the store. So if you forgot to order, there'll be meals there anyways. Um, though like we open at eight o'clock Sunday morning there's sometimes people outside at like 7 30 waiting to buy meals because they know which ones they want and, and you just don't want them missing and yeah like yeah, yeah. yesterday within two hours we sold like 45 from That's the fridge insane. just like because people were in 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 because they forgot to order and That's now there's crazy. two left <laughs> it's Monday morning <laughs> well it's a little late now because this is coming out in three weeks so yeah oh. <laughs> it's not live um Thank you very much for coming in. I know this is a little bit out of the way for you. Uh, I mean, honestly, this is, I, I hopefully will be able to have another talk, mm-hmm. hopefully in the future. And honestly, like I, I really am excited to see where this goes because I think it's gonna be really cool to talk to you, you know, down the road when who knows where this goes, but I think you're, I think you're doing something that's really amazing. I think your value proposition is, is huge. And I think a lot of people, a lot of listeners out there, viewers, Honestly, I know that not all of you are in the area and have access to this, but if you are thinking about that, I, th- I think one of the take home messages today is, is really think about what you're eating, you know, where it's getting sourced and the regularity of it, you know, how you're able to make sure that you're eating the right meals at the right times and you're not just resourcing, resor- resor- resorting to, that was not English, resorting to, you know, whatever I can grab off the shelf. So. Yeah, thank you very much for being here today. Well, thanks for having me. And uh, hopefully we'll see you soon. Yeah. And until the next time, guys, keep building that foundation. <laughs> <laughs>